What is up guys, this is Michael Sean from Unison Games and today I'm coming at you with one of our first Magic the Gathering opening videos on the channel. We're gonna be opening the new set, Ikoria Lair of Behemoths, a box here. So right before recording this video, I recorded a video of me opening a mystery booster box. I'll link that in the description. Once it's up, I'm not sure which of these videos is going up first, but here, this, here's the deal. Most of the time when I play Magic the Gathering, I am playing in the standard format, which means I really didn't know a lot of, I did a lot of research on the Mystery Booster set, but as far as like playing, I really have never played any of the cards that we opened. Eh, there was a couple, there was a couple that I had played from the, some of the newer sets, but Ikoria is something that I actually have done some playing with. Um, I understand the standard metagame quite a bit better than I do in other games, uh, in other formats of Magic the Gathering. So I'm actually super pumped to get to this box. It's going to be kind of a breath of fresh air for me personally. Um, however, our Mystery Booster box opening was a ton of fun, really cool. I would love to consider getting into some of the other formats of Magic. But let's take a look at this Ikoria box. Um, we do have this sealed Ikoria box topper, and then we've got all the different um, packs here. So if you guys have watched my Pokemon videos, you know that I like to pick a favorite pack art and then like if I ever, not that I really do this, but if I ever buy single packs, I only buy of that pack art. And, or if I win stuff at, at events, I only pick that pack art. Just kind of like as a way to be good luck. And I think I gotta go with the the Marmoset. The, 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 I, don't, I actually don't remember the name of the card to be honest with you right now. I'm having a blank. But the one that's like a porcupine and a Marmoset, that's gotta be the best one. Um, I use that card to great success in some sealed things that I've done, some drafting that I've done just with some friends and family. So we'll put those aside. We're gonna open those last, all right? Because that's how we do openings here. But let's start out with the box topper. Let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna be careful. I'm always like freaked out to open these. Luckily they do make them like a tiny bit bigger than the actual card so you can sort of squeeze them a little bit, but yeah, this is uh, this is definitely some riveting entertainment that you're getting right now. Oh, we did it. We did it. And we did it without damaging the card. Boom. All right, here we go. We've got Angurius. Anguirus? Anguirus is what I'm going with. Armored Killer. It is a 4-4 four, for four, 4. You can also mutate it for 3, though. It's got Reach and trample whenever this creature mutates destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls that seems super strong in our current standard meta um a four four for four is great um also uh we're super hyped about that mutate ability that just pops an enchantment or an artifact enchantments are pretty big post theros um ironically there's a lot of enchantments that are big that we're not in Theros necessarily, but Theros makes enchantments better overall, so that has been its, you know, kind of addition to it. But we do have some cool enchantments like some sagas and stuff like that that are really good, like Elspeth Conquers Death and the such like. Okay, cool. So we're going to stick that card in the lineup. Here we go. Pack number one. All right, there's our token. Are these Are these packs backwards? Yes, this box is backwards. Oh no, hold on. All right, we're not gonna wanna do this for every pack, but maybe what we'll do is just grab like the three, like the, to the rare or whatever. All right, Blitz Leech, terrible card. Firefinder, good for limited. Lava Serpent, Boot Nipper, Plummet, Garrison Cat, Glimmer Bell, I like this card a lot actually. Suffocating Fumes. Wilt, definitely good for your like pre-release, your draft setting, your limited settings. Wilt is, I think, is pretty decent. Spell Eater Wolverine uh, has double strike as long as there are three or more instant and or sorcery cards in your graveyard. Kind of cool, maybe in an is it type thing. Speaking of is it, Blitz of the Thunder Raptor is an amazing card. Uh, deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. Very, very good. Is it has plenty of cards that synergize with that. Um, great card. Charge of the Forever Beast, 
Call of the Death Weller is seeing a little bit of play where you just return stuff from your grave, especially in Lyris decks where, you know, they, their CMC has to be three or less, but they already are if you're playing Lyris. So there you go. Speaking of companions, Lutri the Spell Chaser is our first draw here. Um, each non-land card in your starting deck has to have a different name if you would like to be using Lutri. Uh, that's, that's pretty sweet. So it's a 3-2 three, for 3. It has flash, one of ETBs, you, and if you cast it, you can copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose a new target for the copy. So you can just cast it on top of another card that you're playing and just, just double it up. Cool card. We get an island and a human soldier token. I'm just going to leave those kind of separated off to the side. Very cool. All right. That was a pretty decent first pack. Let's see if we can get this open. Man, maybe it's just this box is going to be difficult to open. Okay. Yeah, let's just move the three cards to the back. Okay, so we got one of our Triome Crystals. Alert Heat Bonder. Frill Scare Mentor, Greater Sandworm, Raking Claws, Fertilid, Crustacean, Perimeter Sergeant, Capture Sphere, Blade Banish, Fire Prophecy is another card that I really like. Um, I've been playing that Is It Draw 2 deck in Standard because I think it's a lot of fun, and this is a great card for that. Memory Leak, Migratory Great Horn, we have a promotional card a gain land and mythos of vidrock for four mana it's a sorcery myth mythos of vidrock deals five damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers if white and blue was spent to cast a spell until your next turn those permanents can't attack or block and their activated abilities cannot be activated so kind of kind of cool actually um interesting that you have kind of a control mechanic or a burn mechanic, which makes sense because of the three colors that it's using. All right, I'm not actually sure if that card is going to be amazing. We're not going to put it in the lineup for now, but it is a card that's out there, and it was a rare. Aw, my cat is coming to say hello in the video. Okay, oh, we got there. All right, Reptilian Reflection. Hornbash Mentor, Auspicious Styrix, Shredded Sails, Survivor's Bond, Glimmer Bell, Coordinated Charge, Sleeper Dart, Frenzied Raptor, Cavern Whisperer, Patagia Tiger, Pyroceratops, get a Shark Token, get another Gain Life, cool. Uh, we have a Hollow Porky Parrot in this one, which is kind of cool. Um, it's an interesting card. You know, if you mutate it, uh, or sorry, you can mutate it for three, or you can cast it for four, and then you can tap this creature deals X damage to any target where X is the number of times this creature is mutated. So maybe in like a red mutate deck. Then we got Slither Wisp. Flash. Whenever you cast another spell that has flash, you draw a card, and each opponent loses one life. Pretty interesting. Maybe Demir Flash could be something that's really cool. Definitely something I want to have a try around with. We have a lot of other Really solid Demir cards in the format right now. So um, I like it. Definitely going to add it to the lineup. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Cool. Duskfang Mentor. Sanctuary Lockdown. Jubilant Skybonder. Fertilid. Wilt. Facet Reader. Frostveil Ambush. Perimeter Sergeant. Corpse Churn, Pacifism, Go for Blood, I like this card a lot, Mutual Destruction, a Human Shoulder Token, a Swamp, a Hollow Blitz of the Thunder Raptor, I already talked about that card and how much I like it, and Offspring's Revenge, oh that is like the coolest looking art, I love that, that's really cool. Um, at the beginning of combat on your turn, exile target, red, white, or black creature card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's 1-1, one, one, it gains haste until end of turn. Kind of interesting, cute little like mechanic. Don't know that it'll be super great, but it is kind of cool. All right. Let's take a look. All right, we've got Neutralize, counter target spell, Trumpeting Gnar, 
Heartless Act is a card that actually a lot of people are really hyped about. Just really, really good removal. Flycatcher Giraffid. Raking Claws. Survivor's Bond. Divine Arrow. Convolute. Imposing Vontasaur. Keep Safe. Memory Leak. Excavation Mole. Heightened Reflexes. Human Soldier Token. Forest. And Mythos of Aluna. So this one is for four. You create a token that's a copy of target permanent. If red and green was spent to cast the spell, instead create a token that's a copy of permanent, except that token has when this permanent ETBs. If it's a creature, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Pretty interesting. That one, I think, has a little bit more potential than the other one that we pulled. I still don't know. I haven't seen it in any decks, but I, 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 I think it does have some potential. Just as a side note here, we are largely talking about um, uh, about standard metagame here in this particular video, since we're opening a set that is obviously standard legal. So uh, let's take a look. We got Lead the Stampede, Keensight Mentor, Jubilant Skybonder, Springjaw Trap, Adventurous Impulse, Blazing Volley, Snare Tactician, Anticipate, Night Squad Commando, Pacifism. Cool, a uh, alternate art Cloud Piercer. This is actually a really good card. I like this card a lot. Dark Bargain. We have a Companion Token. A Gain Life. All right, a Hollow Dranith Magistrate. That's pretty good, actually. Um, it prevents your opponent from casting spells from anywhere other than their hand, which is pretty strong. Um, I like it a lot. And we also got the Demir, um, the Demir Companion. So this one says that if your starting deck contains only cards that are even CMCs, you can use this as your companion. It is for a 6-6, six, 4-6. Six, six. When it enters the battlefield, each player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. Put a creature card with an even CMC from among those cards onto the battlefield you control. Pretty sweet. All right. Take a look. Something to note there is you could actually be casting one of your opponent's cards in that in that situation. All right, let's go ahead and get these taken care of. We've got Barrier Breach, Zagath Mamba, Insatiable, Insatiable Hemophage. Pretty cool. Thwart the Enemy, Spontaneous Flight, Bristling Boar, Wait, let's just go back to Spontaneous Flight to admire how cute this little flying fox is. All right, Bristling Boar. Imposing Vantasaur, Blister Spit Gremlin of One Mind, Dranith Healer. Really cool if you want to do like a cycling kind of uh, engine in this. Whenever you cycle another card, you gain one life. Pretty sweet. Vulpakeet, Gopher Blood, Dark Bargain, Get a Human Soldier Token. Uh, we got a Gain Land and another Dranith Magistrate. Very cool. I'm gonna. We already have the hollow one in there, so I'm not gonna put it in our lineup. But it is cool nonetheless. I do think that that card is gonna be seeing some play. If not in the main deck, I think it'll definitely be in the sideboard for certain decks. All right. We got Mystic Subduel, Momentum Rumbler, Boneyard Lurker, Tentative Connection. The Almighty Brushwag, Whisper Squad, Aegis Turtle, Savai Sabretooth, Frost Lynx, Farfinder, Prickly Marmoset, that is the the card art of choice as for or the pack art of choice, Prickly Marmoset, Blitz Leech, Migratory Great Horn, we got a human soldier, an island. And Song of Creation. This is a card that actually has a lot of controversy surrounding it. Some people really like it. Some people really don't. I think it's definitely worth a play around with. For one, a blue, a green, and a red, you may play an additional land on each of your turns. Whenever you cast a spell, draw two cards. At the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. So kind of an interesting card. Um, I, think, I think it's definitely worth a shot in some decks. So yeah, there we go. Okay. We 
We've got Rooting Moloch. Flame Spill. Flame Spill is pretty decent. Um, for three mana, you deal four damage to target creature, and excess damage is dealt to the controller, which is really cool. Necro Panther. Bristling Boar. Breaking Claws. Wilt. Frost Links. Light of Hope. Adaptive Shimmerer. Wingfold Terran. Blitz Leech. Dreamtail Heron. Heightened Reflexes. We got a Human Soldier. A Gainland. And General Kudrow of Dranith. This is uh, something that's becoming um, a pretty sweet deck. Other humans you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever uh, this or another human ETB is under your control, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. And then for two, you can sacrifice two humans and destroy a creature with power four or greater. Pretty decent. It's a three for three for three, so it's already just has decent base stats. I like it a lot. Um, could be really sweet. All right. Here we go. We've got Weaponize the Monsters, Indatha Crystal, Parcel Beast. Parcel Beast is something that a lot of people are starting to kind of see how cool it is. Uh, you can mutate it for two, which is really cheap for a 2-4. And then for one, you can tap, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield. If you don't put that card onto the battlefield, put it into your hand. So it's basically one and tap, draw a card and it gets you an extra land if the card that you draw is land. Uh, that's that's really, really solid. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really good card. I think for Simic Ramp, it's, it's going to be pretty sweet. Unexpected Fangs, Greater Sandworm, Light of Hope, Sleeper Dart, Frostvale Ambush, Dreamtail Heron, Lurking Deadeye, Dranith Stinger, Blood Curdle, Cat Token, Forest, Polywog Symbiote is our hollow here. Each creature spell you cost costs one less to ca cast if it has mutate. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if it has mutate, draw a card, then discard a card. Kind of cool. All right. And Bonders and Clave is our rare land here. You can tap it to add colorless, or you can pay three, tap, draw a card. Activate this ability only if you control a creature with power four or greater. I suppose it's okay. Um, I don't think it's going to see a ton of play, though, because it's a little expensive. Okay. We've got Flourishing Fox, Savai Crystal, Huntmaster Liger, Fertilid, Unlikely Aid, Wilt, Checkpoint Officer, Wingfold Terran, Gloom Pangaloin, or Pangolin, sorry, Blade Banish, Lava Serpent, Mutual Destruction, Essence Symbiote. We got the new like little counter things that come in here. A Swamp and Shevel Bane of Monsters. This is another card that I think is really, really interesting. It's just two uh, in Golgari. You've got one, three, Death Touch at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control no permanents with bounty counters on them, put a bounty counter on target creature, planeswalker, and opponent controls. Whenever a permanent an opponent controls with a bounty counter on it dies, you gain three life and draw a card. So minimum, right, this is a death toucher. Minimum, you're going to come in here and you're going to um, put a counter on one of your opponent's uh, creatures. As soon as that creature gets blocked by Cheville, it has death touch, so it's going to die. Whenever the permanent dies, you gain three life and draw a card. So for two mana, you've got a one, three that becomes a blocker and most likely will at least gain you three life and draw a card at least once. So seems really strong. Um, I think it is probably being a little overlooked right now. Okay, we got Void Beckoner, Cunning Nightbound, Splendor Mare, Ram Through, Shredded Sails, Of One Mind, Capture Sphere, Coordinated Charge, Forbidden Friendship, Durable Coil Bug, Patagia Tire, Tiger, Ferocious Tigerilla. We get a Beast Token, a Plains, a Hollow Forest, and Urian Sky Nomad. This is uh, potentially one of the best companions coming out of this set. 
um, especially for stuff like um, control. The way that you get to start it as your companion is you play at least 20 more than the minimum deck size. So in standard, you would have to be playing an 80 card deck. It's 4-5 flyer. When it ETBs, you exile any number of other non-land permanents you own and control. Return those creature cards to the battlefield at the beginning of your next step. Really cool, uh, really cool creature. Um, it's in Azorius colors, so it slots right into a lot of control decks. The exiling could potentially get you like constellation triggers or things like that. Um, so yeah, I think it's got a lot of potential. All right, Wingspan Mentor, Titaneth Rex, Lore Dracus. Uh, this looks pretty sweet. Um, it's, is it? You can mutate it for two. When this creature mutates, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to hand. That seems pretty strong. Uh, Mosscoat Goriak, Evolving Wilds, Helica Glider, Frostvale Ambush, Blazing Volley, Divine Arrow, Lava Serpent, Durable Coil Bug, Farfinder, Forbidden Friendship. We got some more counters. We got another gain land and Indatha Triome. These Triomes are going to be great. Everybody's going to play them, um, and uh, yeah, we just get just get a nice plain swamp forest. So let's go ahead and stick that in the lineup. I think that's pretty decent. Actually, this box is pretty good so far. Um, we've gotten some some really playable cards from it. All right, we got reconnaissance mission. Clash of Titans, Sprite Dragon, which is another really hyped card for Is It Flying Haste One One. When you cast a non-creature spell, you put a plus one plus one counter on the Sprite Dragon. Seems really strong. Thor, this honestly, you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of an Is It version of Pelt Collector. For like a couple formats ago, Gruel was huge because of Pelt Collector. Gruel is still has potential, and Pelt Collector is the early game option. This is Is It's early game option, like that. Thwart the enemy. Unexpected Fangs, Gust of Wind. I'm not saying that it's going to be as good as Pell Collector, just in case any of you guys are like raging watching this video, but I think it is going to be good. Anticipate, Solid Footing, Blood Curdle, Cloud Piercer, Dead Weight, Pacifism, A Human Soldier, A Swamp. Okay, we got a Hollow Slither Wisp. I already talked about how I really like this card. And Extinction Event. Choose Otter Even, Exile each creature with a converted mana cost of the chosen value kind of an interesting removal spell i don't know because it's black there i think we probably have just better options than a quasi um quasi board wipe there but it is a cool card nonetheless it's actually hoping that i was going to get some Sly slither wisps because i do really want to try that that uh that deck um where it's uh, uh, Flash, so Demir Flash. Easy Prey, Zagoth Crystal, General's Enforcer, Suffocating Fumes, Honey Mammoth, Spontaneous Flight, uh, Maned Serval, Facet Reader, Sleeper Dart, Forbidden Friendship, Lurking Deadeye, Vulpakeet, Prickly Marmoset, a Companion Token, a Jungle Hollow, and, oh, this is sweet, Luca Coppercoat Outcast. So this is uh, this is the new Planeswalker from this set. This is, of course, the uh, alternate art version of it. Um, it's plus one is exile the top three cards of your library. Creature cards exile this way. Gain, you may cast this card from exile as long as you control Luca Planeswalker. Pretty sweet. Just kind of dig through your deck. Uh, minus two, exile target creature you control. Then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with higher CMC cost. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So you basically just upgrade your creatures. And then in minus seven is each creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. Sounds like a cool way to win the game. Very strong Planeswalker, plus it's a new Planeswalker, so we're all hyped about it anyway. And it's an alternate art mythic, which is pretty sweet on its own. All right, we got Bastion of Remembrance, which is a pretty sweet card. It says whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain life. So I like to, I'm a terrible person, and I like to play um, the the Cat Oven decks, you know, the, the, the Witch's Oven with the Cauldron Familiar. This is a great card for those types of decks. Um, yeah, 
Pouncing Shore Shark, Sivai Thundermane, the Almighty Brushwag, Spell Eater Wolverine, Savai Sabretooth, Aegis Turtle, Glimmer Bell, Corpse Churn, Essence Scatter, Frenzied Raptor, Night Squad Commando, a nice advertisement, Planes, Reverse, or I almost said Reverse Hollow because that's uh, that's Pokemon's language, just Hollow Facet Reader, pretty sweet, and Runus Ultimatum. Destroy all non-land permanents your opponent controls. One-sided board wiping seems pretty strong. Obviously, it costs a lot, and I think the big thing that I actually just heard a couple people on YouTube talking about this card, potentially making it work, and it's all really going to depend how the decks that uh, play those colors uh, fair and I think the 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 big the big contender is uh, General Kudrow and decks surrounding that I think could be really really interesting and I think they would probably play this card. Cool. The ultimatums are kind of like one of the the highlights of the set, if you will. You know, you got the Trium lands with their with their crystals. You got the Apex Predators. You got the ultimatums and you got the mythos and you know there's just a lot of themes going around in the set and the ultimatums are one of them we got zagath mamba keensight mentor alert heed bonder suffocating fumes thwart the enemy snare tactician anticipate glimmer bell garrison cat pacifism cloud piercer that's pretty cool we got two of these now dark bargain boot nipper a human soldier a forest and Shark Typhoon. Shark Typhoon is one of my favorite cards in the set. It's just really amazing. Um, if Control needed more pieces, it definitely got them in Shark Typhoon. I love Control, by the way. Um, don't take that as me saying I hate Control decks. I actually really like them. Basically, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you create an XX Blue Shark creature token with flying, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. You can also cycle this for X, 1, and a blue. When you cycle Shark Typhoon, you create an XX Blue Shark Token, Creature Token with Flying. So whether you play it or you cycle it, you get some fancy sharks that are flying in the air. Who doesn't love Sharknado? Alright, here's our next pack. We got Neutralize, Heartless Act, General's Enforcer, Shredded Sails, Adventurous Impulse, Spring Jaw Trap, Plummet, Crustacean, Perimeter Sergeant, Capture Sphere, Lava Serpent, Farfinder, Blitz Leech. We got some counters. We got Swift Water Cliffs. And we got another one of those Triomes. I am always okay pulling the Triomes. They're obviously going to be, a, you know, at least a couple dollars. And uh, a lot of people are going to play them in play sets. So I'm down. I'm down for pulling one. They're definitely going to be the most prevalent card played in the set so i am down for it all right we got uh rogrin crystal i'm gonna say titanoth rex huntmaster liger greater sandworm unexpected fangs blade banish aegis turtle solid footing fire prophecy memory leak migratory great horn prickly marmoset an advertisement in island okay a reverse hollow eluna apex of wishes you can mutate this so this is you can play this in just like an is it deck or of course you can actually play all three colors you can mutate it for three a uh a red or green and a two blues flying trample when this mutates exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent card put that card onto the battlefield or into your hand yeah that's really strong that's like super strong. Plus, if you mutate it, it's a 6-6 six, six for 6 with flying and trample. Really, really cool hollow pull there. And that's not even just our rare. We also have Umori the Collector. It is a legendary creature ooze with companion. It says if you want to play it as your companion, each non-land card in your starting deck shares a card type. Which is kind of interesting. As it enters the battlefield, choose a card type. Spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast. Kind of interesting. I'm just going to separate this into two piles. There we go. Very cool. I like that uh, the Aluna is really, really cool. Okay, Escape Protocol, Unbreakable Bond, Footfall Crater, Spell Eater Wolverine, Mosscoat Goriak, Suffocating Fumes, Gloom Pangolin, 
Phase Dolphin, Checkpoint Officer, Excavation Mole, Cathartic Reunion, Cavern Whisperer, Day Squad Marshal, some advertisements, a mountain, and Lurus of the Dream Den. Look, it's like just like my kitty. Perfect. I love it. Lurus of the Dream Den. All right, companion, each permanent card in your starting deck has a CMC of two or less. It's lifelink 3-2. During each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard. Okay, here's the deal. This card's fantastic, but there's no way this won't get banned. It's too, too, like way too, it's it's unbelievably good. There's no way that it's not going to get banned, but we're going to enjoy it while it's here. Um, I don't I honestly don't even know if it's worth building around. I, you know, with how long it took Wizards to ban Oko, I think it probably is worth building a deck out of it and just creaming some people, even if you're just playing online or just with some friends or whatever, because it will take a little bit of time. I don't think they're going to ban anything in Standard quite yet, because they still want to make some money off of us. But it's an amazing card, super cool, and, uh, you know, I like cats. So here we go. Ominous Seas, Reptilian Reflection, Dire Tactics, Honey Mammoth, Evolving Wilds, Keep Safe, Plummet, Imposing Vantasaur, Convolute, Cloud Piercer, Corpse Churn, Essence Symbiote, A Human Soldier, Rugged Highlands, a, a, a Hollow Cathartic Reunion, and Everquill Phoenix. Um, it is a 4 cost, 4-4. Four, four. You can also mutate it for 4, Flying. When this creature mutates, create a red artifact token named Feather with pay one. Sacrifice Feather, return target Phoenix card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Kind of cool. Not sure how much that's going to be relevant. Um, I don't know that we have a ton of amazing Phoenix cards. We, we have some really good Phoenix cards. I just don't know how many we have. Um, so, All right, Charge of the Forever Beast, Sanctuary Smasher. Zenith Flare is a big piece of that cycling deck that just deals damage and gains you life based on how many cycling cards you have in your graveyard. The Almighty Brushwag, Tentative Connection, Anticipate, Divine Arrow, Of One Mind, a Alternate Art Vulpakeet, Lurking Deadeye, Rumbling Rock Slide, Dead Weight, a Human Soldier, an Island, a hollow forest and cub warden um it's a four cost three five you can mutate it for four lifelink when this creature mutates create two one one white cat creature tokens with lifelink that seems really good i'm actually gonna put that in the the lineup uh lifelink is a little dangerous right now there's a lot of uh gain life hate um but i think post rotation that's what i'm gonna be playing as soon as we get a rotation i'm gonna be playing white gain life because i think we have so many good pieces for it and some of the hate for it is going to be rotating so um, that might be a good option in that. Okay. Migration Path, Auspicious Sterix, Primal Empathy, Flycatcher Giraffid, Springjaw Trap, Greater Sandworm, Adaptive Shimmerer, Snare Tactician, Startling Development, Day Squad Marshal, Pyroceratops, Night Squad Commando, Fire Prophecy, a dinosaur token, a swamp, and another Aluna Apex of Wishes. I really, really, really like this card. We already talked about it, though, so I'm not going to put you guys through that again. But we have both a regular one and a hollow one. All we need now is a nice alternate art one. We still got some packs. Maybe we'll get it. This will just be the Aluna box. Like I said, this box is uh, pretty good. All right, Swallow Hole. I really like that card. Polywog Symbiote, Sonorous Halbonder, Sudden Spinnerets, Mysterious Egg, Honey Mammoth, uh, Blister Spit Gremlin, Phase Dolphin, Helica Glider, Crustacean, Boot Nipper, Dead Weight, Rumbling Rock Slide, A Human Soldier, Swiftwater Cliffs, and Gem Razor. It is a four for four. You can mutate it. For three, it has reached trample. Whenever this creature mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. Pretty decent. Um, I think it'll see play in some green decks, maybe in some Simic Ramp or something similar to that. Some Gruel. 
gruel trampoly tramples something like that could be cool all right call of the death dweller parcel beast we already talked about how good that card is trumpeting gnar bristling boar mysterious egg sudden spinnerets crustacean dranith healer glimmer bell coordinated charge durable coil bug dreamtail heron frenzied raptor a shark a windscarred crag and labyrinth raptor this is in Rakdos colors. It has Menace. It's a 2-2, two, 4-2. Two, two. When a creature you control with Menace becomes block, defending player sacrifices a creature blocking it. Whoa, that's cool. Uh, you can pay two creatures you control with Menace, get plus one, plus zero. I actually think Menace, there's, there's, some, there's some really cool stuff with Menace. Before the rotation, we actually have, I believe, an Angrath, Planeswalker, in the uncommon slot that... Um, uh, that gives everything menace so that could be something really interesting there's a great uh from eldraine as well there's a great uh rakdos creature that's pretty cheap and it uh, it draws you an extra card every turn so i think there's some some uh potential with some menace stuff all right we got ivy elemental pouncing shore shark blitz of the thunder raptor which we already talked about how much i like of that card breaking claws flycatcher giraffig spontaneous flight Savai Sabretooth, Wingfold Terran, Blister Spit Gremlin, Helica Glider, Serrated Scorpion, Essence Scatter, Ferocious Tigerilla, Human Soldier, Blossoming Sands, and Je uh, Jagantha, Gigantha, that's how you say it, Gigantha the Wellspring. Interesting, interesting card, Elemental Elk. Companion says no card in your starting deck has more than one of the same mana symbol in its mana cost you can tap it to add one of each color this mana can't be spent to pay generic mana costs so kind of interesting um it's a five five for five uh it slots into all kinds of cool stuff so very interesting card i'm sure somebody's going to find some way to break it okay here we go we got Stormwild, wild hornbash mentor Frill Scare Mentor, Mentor, yep, Unlikely Aid, Adventurous Impulse, Blade Banish, Gust of Wind, Coordinated Charge, Keep Safe, Memory Leak, Essence Symbiote, Cathartic Reunion, Human Soldier, Planes, Charge of the Forever Beast, and the Ozolith. When a creature you control leaves the battlefield, it, if it had counters on it, put those counters on the Ozolith. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you may move all counters from Ozolith onto target creature. Really interesting idea. Of course, we're getting all kinds of different counters now. Um, and uh, I don't know. Maybe proliferate? Question mark? I don't know. I haven't heard anybody talk about that. Um, hopefully, there hasn't been some ruling that I'm not aware of that things don't count. Like first strike, you can't. Can you proliferate something and give it two first strike counters? I, I mean, it seems like you should be able to, but. And then with the Ozolith, when the thing dies, you get to give two creatures for a strike. I don't know. That could be cool. Uh, maybe just as like a for fun thing, though. I don't know. Fight is one. Boon of the Wish Giver. Back for more. Mysterious Egg. Sudden Spinnerets. Whisper Squad. Perimeter Sergeant. Convolute. Garrison Cat. Capture Sphere. Serrated Scorpion. Gopher Blood. Excavation Mole. A Human Soldier. A Tranquil Cove. And Whirlwind of thought whenever you cast a non-creature spell draw a card pretty interesting for maybe some type of control build there um maybe with the new nar set obviously in the same colors that could be really cool that nar set looks pretty sweet i wouldn't mind pulling one it would be pretty sweet okay monstrous step channeled force archipelago Fertilid, Shredded Sails, Checkpoint Officer, Frost Links, Startling Development, Cavern Whisperer, Rumbling Rock Slide, Bushmeat Poacher, Essence Scatter, A Cat, A Forest, A Thwart the Energy That is Hollowed, Thwart the Enemy, and a Yadaro Wandering Monster. This is an 8 8 that you pay for 7 as Trample Haste Cycling for 2. When you cycle this, you shuffle it into your library from your graveyard. If you've cycled a card named Yudara Wandering Monster four more times this game, you put it onto the battlefield from your graveyard instead. Really, really cool card. Um, could potentially be a part of that cycle deck that I've 
alluded to a couple times. Okay, we are to our prickly marmoset. Let's see. Hopefully these have the best pulls yet. That is the intention of picking a favorite favorite pack art. All right, Avian Oddity, Skull Prophet. Really cool card for Golgari decks. Glowstone Recluse, Humble Naturalist, also a really good green card. Evolving Wilds, Fully Grown, Adaptive Shimmerer, Solid Footing, Facet Reader, Thieving Otter, Cathartic Reunion, Serrated Scorpion. I haven't mentioned Serrated Scorpion yet. This card is way too good. It's like for one black, it's a 1-2, which is already amazing. When it dies, it deals 2 damage to each opponent, and you gain 2 life. That's crazy. Fire Prophecy. Kraken. Dismal Blackwater. And Mythos of Brokos. So, uh, obviously for 4, if, uh, one, if 1 blue and 1 black was spent to cast the spell, search your library for a card, put that card into your graveyard, then shelf your library, and then after that, it just says return up to 2 permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. Not so bad. Um, I don't know if we're going to add it to the lineup, though. I'm not sure if it's quite lineup worthy. Okay. All right. Sanctuary Lockdown, Exuberant Wolf Bear, Sprite Dragon, Evolving Wilds, Humble Naturalist, Fully Grown, Aegis Turtle, Solid Footing, Crustacean. Dranith Healer, Prickly Marmoset, Durable Coil Bug, Dreamtail Heron, Some Counters, A Mountain, and Eerie Ultimatum. Return any number of permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield. Another one of those cards that could be really interesting. Not sure whether it'll be played or not, but it is one of the featured cards in the sets, so we'll add it to the lineup, even if it may not be uh, ultra playable right now. All right, this one's opening in weird ways for us. We're going to get it, though. There we go. Okay. We got Duskfane Mentor, Ivy Elemental, Porky Parrot, Tentative Connection, Moscoat Goriak, or Goriak, sorry, Maned Serval, Starling Development, Dranith Healer, Hampering Snare, Pyroceratops, Bushmeat Poacher, Day Squad Marshal, Frenzied Raptor, Thornwood Falls, and Zagoth Triome. Pretty sweet. I actually really like this. So there's, I'm a comic guy, and uh, while I'm opening the next pack, the alternate arts on this one really remind me a lot of comic book art. In particular, there's a comic book right now that Image is doing called um, Oblivion, and uh, it's written by kind of like an all-star, um, all-star writer. And uh, the artist draws, like, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm going to look, actually, after this. I really wouldn't be surprised if the artist has done some of the art for this magic set because it looks a lot like like these, like, very colorful, kind of cartoonish almost. But, yeah, really cool. Will of the All Hunter, Regal Alanosaur, Leosaur, Proud Wild Bonder, Ram Through, Fully Grown, Gloom Pangolin, Thieving Otter, Snare Tactician, Hampering Snare, Dranith Stinger, Mutual Destruction, Migratory Great Horn, a Dinosaur Token, a Mountain. Oh, that's pretty cool. So a hollow alternate art, Nethroi Apex of Death. Um, it costs five to cast, or you can mutate it for, what is that, seven? Uh, as Death Touch and Life Link, it's a 5-5. Five, five. Whenever this creature mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Super, super good in like Golgari style deaths. Dex, that looks really awesome. Okay, and then we have Inspired Ultimatum. Target player gains five life. Inspired Ultimatum deals five damage to any target, and then you draw five cards. This actually seems like something that you could totally play. Um, obviously, your, um, you know, you got like, is it type decks that are just playing tons of stuff? You got Fires of Invention, some of those types of things. So I'm going to definitely add that one to the lineup. That was a great pack. Really cool. All right, we got three more packs here. Here we go. Exuberant Wolf Bear, Valiant Rescuer, 
Chittering, Harvester, Ram Through, Fully Grown, Unlikely Aid, Gust of Wind, Garrison Cat, Blazing Volley, Heightened Reflexes, Blood Curdle, Bushmeat, Poacher, oops, sorry about that, Granite Stinger, we got some counters, we got Blossoming Sand, and we got Mythos of Snapdax. The very first pack that I opened in this set was an alternate art, Snapdax, uh, so I, I like Mythos of Snapdax. I don't know if it's particularly playable, though, so we're going to put it over there. All right, let's 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 get some kind of uh, Mythic. I had one of these last two packs. Not that I'm complaining about our Mythic spread, we have gotten quite a few. Okay, Katria Crystal. Grim Dancer, Majestic uh, Oricorn, kind of cool. Humble Naturalist, Spell Eater Wolverine, Survivor's Bond, Light of Hope, Phase Dolphin, Plummet, Boot Nipper, Dark Bargain, Ferocious Tigerilla, Pategia Tiger, Bloodfell Caves, and Death's Oasis. Whenever a non token creature you control dies, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Then return a creature card with lesser converted mana cost than that creature that died from your graveyard to your hand. You pay one, sacrifice this to gain life equal to the greatest CMC mana cost among creatures you control. So just lots of uh, recursion. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. All right, and we got our last pack. Here we go. All Polywog Symbiote. Void Beckoner, Porky Parrot, Survivor's Bond, Whisper Squad, Humble Naturalist, Sleeper Dart, Thieving Otter, Main Serval, Hampering Snare, Cavern Whisperer, Pategia Tire, Tiger, Pyroceratops, A Human Soldier, A Mountain, and Hunted Nightmare. For three mana, you get a four or five, which seems really good. Menace, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent puts a Death Touch counter on a creature they control so still seems really good though uh i like it very cool all right that is our pack should we look at the highlight reel together uh this is in no particular order uh, let's see trying not to damage anything we'll obviously start with our box topper there um, so th th these are kind of like really interesting cards to me because like they're sort of like reprints of cards that just have like the Godzilla characters on them. So Anguirus, Armored Killer, Slither Wisp, Indatha Triome, Eurion, Slither Wisp, Lutri, Shevel, Kudro, Song of Creation, Garuda, Dranith, uh, Dranith Magistrate, Hunted Nightmare, Death's Oasis, Inspired Ultimatum, Nethroi, Zagoth Triome, Eerie Ultimatum, Yadaro, Whirlwind of Thought, the Ozolith, Gigantha, Labyrinth Raptor, uh, Gem Razor, Eluna, Apex of Wishes, Cubwarden, Lurus, Hollow Eluna, Apex of Wishes, uh, uh, Rogren Triome, Shark Typhoon, Runus Ultimatum, Luca, and Umori. Pretty sweet box. I am uh, definitely not upset. That was some really good pulls that we got there. But hey, let me know if you guys really like these magic openings. You know, a lot of times on my channel, I'm covering the Pokemon trading card game. It's certainly my primary trading card game, but I figured I would bring you guys some MTG con content as well. So let me know how you feel about that. Tell me in the comment section what your favorite card that we pulled, and tell me in the comment section what your favorite format of Magic the Gathering is. I would love to have the answer to those questions. Um, also, just be sure to like this video and to subscribe to the channel. Check out my other content. I have plenty of content coming all the time. And uh, yeah, definitely let me know how you feel about these MTG uh, uh, style videos and whether or not you are a Magic player as well. So, hey, I will see you guys soon. I'm doing tons of content, so definitely make sure that you stay updated and subscribe to the channel. But hey, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.